Well, let's start, let's start at the beginning. So, so what is Drawdown? Can you just break that down for us? So, so, so Drawdown is a point in time. It's that time when we uh, 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 reduce atmospheric concentrations on a year-to-year -year basis. When we, essentially, when we pull out more greenhouse gases than we're putting into Earth's atmosphere. And the proposition is really simple. When we can uh, reduce those concentrations of heat trapping gases, we can essentially affect global cooling, essentially stopping global warming and beginning a long process of reversing it. And so that's what drawdown is, is that point in time when we can start to really uh, 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 reduce atmospheric uh, greenhouse gases. Well, that's interesting because we often talk about um, mitigating climate change. Uh, and you guys uh, at Drawdown are taking quite a strong position here. You're saying we can reverse global warming. Absolutely. I mean, mitigation just means to lessen. It means to reduce the impact of. And, and that's important. We need to mitigate uh, the impact of climate change. And probably more important, we need to mitigate or reduce to lessen, reduce the emissions that are going into the atmosphere to start with. Um, but mitigation is only part of it. And it's an important stepping stone to a goal that we actually want. What we really want to do is stop global warming and begin to reverse it. That's what the, that's the aim. That's that sort of what I like to think of it as like the, the marker on the horizon pointing us to the future that we actually want, right? There's many pathways to get there, right? And mitigation is one, one strategy. It's, it's getting us partially there. But if we don't envision where we actually want to be, we're not going to get there. So we need to say, what is it that we want? We want to stop global warming. We want to begin the process of reversing it. We need to find and take the first steps on that pathway to reach that horizon point and move as fast as we can, as urgently, as safely and as equit equitably as we can to get there. Um, but if we don't name that as a starting point, we're never ever going to reach there. So that, that's really what we want to set out with, with Drawdown, with Project Drawdown, is to name the goal, name where we actually want to be, and not confuse things, not name half measures, like mitigation to, a, to, to, to ensure a two degree warming target, Celsius warming target, or 1.5 degree Celsius warming target. These are very important targets, very important. But again, these are stopgap measures. We want to go beyond that. We want to say, okay, yes, let's go there, but let's go further. Yeah. Where do we, how do we go further than that and create a regenerative society and a regenerative economy that benefits all people yeah. while at the same time solving the climate emergency that we're all facing today? Well, and we often use uh, climate change and global warming interchangeably, but you make a very specific distinction between the two. Can you tell us about that? Absolutely. And, and, and it's okay, first of all, to use them interchangeably because we have done that so often uh, uh, as, we, as we discuss in, a, in, a, in this discourse. We've, do, we've certainly been using them interchangeably and to a certain extent we can. Um, but I think that there is an important distinction when we really have to think about the solutions to the problem at hand, right? Um, climate change is essentially a symptom, a symptom of a deeper problem. It's the earth, it's telling us what's going wrong. Uh, it's the, it, and what's going wrong is actually global warming. That's what's causing climate change. Uh, and it's, it's affecting, uh, the atmosphere is affecting our, uh, our, our climate. Um, and so we need to address not just the symptoms, the climate change itself, but we need to uh, address the actual cause of the, of the sickness, the cause of the disease, and that is emissions themselves. Emissions caused by human activity that are entering the atmosphere, trapping heat, and essentially, uh, it's like putting, we're basically putting lots of blankets over the planet that is experiencing a fever, right? It's getting hotter and hotter and hotter, and this is causing all of these uh, uh, other impacts to our terrestrial systems, to our ocean systems, to our biodiversity, um, and to human social and economic systems. And it's, and it's as, these are the symptoms of that problem. So how do we actually address the problem itself? How do we, how do we address the cause of these symptoms 
And that is how do we turn off the emissions that are for the for, for as a starting point causing the global warming? And then how do we enhance those sinks, those natural uh, natural carbon sinks in our in our land and our ocean systems that pull carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere? And that's a way for us to help uh, 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 solve and help cure the illness that we already are experiencing. So how do we turn off the emissions, turn up the, uh, the sinks, and, and really address the root cause of the illness itself? Yeah. But we have to do that in a equitable and safe and inclusive way with justice at its core, because these are technologies and practices that we profile at Drawdown that have a direct effect on emissions, but there's deeper embedded systems and structures in place that also have to be addressed um, to shift the system from exploitation and extraction, which are in no small measure causing and rooted in creating these emissions uh, to a restorative and regenerative system, yeah. as I said, which can address the underlying structures themselves. And that has to be done with, with, with justice and uh, uh, an equity and inclusion at its heart. And that's how we, how we need to be implementing these solutions and solving the problem itself. Well, and your research has led you to 100 solutions, or at least priority areas. Um, the shocking thing for me personally was to find food waste and food laws right at the top of that list as a potential solution to, to impacting emissions. Do you want to expand on that? Yes, of course. So, so what we did over the course of the last six years uh, is assemble a team of researchers from all over the world and uh, we've mapped, measured, and described uh, real existing technologies and practices that when taken together as a system of solutions can achieve this goal of drawdown, can, can help us achieve our global goals, the sustainable development goals, can help us go on this pathway towards that future that we want. And so we've mapped a lot of these solutions. Some of these are existing. Some of the hundred that we profiled in our first book, uh, uh, Drawdown in 2017, uh, some of them are coming attractions. These are new emerging technologies that uh, can come on board. And when they come on board uh, into the system, they can help accelerate our progress. Um, but most of them, uh, uh, at the time, 80 solutions uh, that we published a book, um, uh, are, are existing technologies that can uh, achieve drawdown. Uh, we've recently, in, in, in 2020, produced the Drawdown Review, which is an update of all of our research from the book in 2017. Um, and so some of the solutions have shifted, as they've changed in terms of the rankings, and we have 76 solutions now in the Drawdown Review. Um, and uh, these are really, really uh, global solutions that are applicable in a variety of spaces. And one of the ones that uh, really reached the top again, so in, in 2017, reducing food waste uh, was our number three solution. In uh, the latest review, uh, it's still in the, in the top, uh, top three solutions. We produced two new scenarios. One scenario, scenario one is, is aligned with the two degree warming target, two degree warming Celsius target. And the other scenario is aligned with a 1.5 degree Celsius warming target. And in each of these two scenarios, uh, food waste really tops the list. And, and, and the two degree warming target, it's, a, it's, the, it's the top, the first, the, the number one. Um, and in the 1.5, it's, the, it's, the, it's again the third, third solution. So, but the point is these are really, really important. It's a really important uh, uh, solution. Um, and uh, uh, and it's, it's, it's kind of, if we think about uh, food loss and waste, um, yeah. it becomes pretty obvious, right? Uh, it, currently, we, we, we lose or, or waste about 30% or 30 to 40% of all food that's produced for human consumption. It's not even consumed. And that, that loss and waste uh, accounts for about 8% of our global greenhouse gases. And it's kind of, I have to be honest, Dati, it's one of the dumbest things we ever can do as a species. I mean, humanity is brilliant. Let's get, we are a brilliant species, but we do some incredibly dumb things at times, like creating a system that's exploitative and extractive to start with. So the whole system can be dumb at times, but there's some brilliant things that have come out of that. Don't get us wrong. Um, but one of the really dumb things we could do is um, produce so much food and waste 30 to 40% of it. So, so I think how we, we need to really, when we see that as sort of 
uh, an opportunity to change and to find what are the solutions to those food loss and waste um, and try to prevent that 8% of global greenhouse gases, it, it becomes really clear that it's, it's one of the most important uh, in solutions. Yeah, did you say 8%? Is that the Around point? 8% in global greenhouse gases, yeah. Yeah, okay, that is not a small amount. No. Yeah. Well, sorry, yeah. That, that's interesting because, um, you know, the dominant narrative here has been, has been that if we, you know, if, when we change and, well, we should, uh, from fossil fuels to, 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 to solar energy, for example, um, that's the big change that the world needs to make. And, and you're suggesting something, something else here. Yes, in addition to that, and maybe even more importantly than that, we need to be looking at our food system as, as the big shift that the world needs to make in, in how we live, how we produce, and, and, and what impact we will have on emissions. Yeah, I, I, I would caution to say level of importance uh -huh. because we need them all. And, and in fact, how we address electricity generation is one of the most important solutions and we need to achieve a 100% clean renewable grid as, as, as urgently and as safely as possible. Um, and because this is, electricity generation counts for about 25% of global greenhouse gases as a whole, right? But where are the other 75% coming from? Um, and they come, 24% of global greenhouse gas, gases comes from uh, uh, the food system itself. Um, about the, the, what we're consuming, how we're producing that food, and what we're wasting. Um, uh, and, 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 and that 24% can be addressed. And of course, there are other sectors as well, buildings and transportation and our industrial processes that accounts for the other 50% of global greenhouse gases. So we need them all. It's not a level of what's more or less important. There are no silver bullets. There's no subset of these solutions that are gonna get us there. Um, there's not the top 20 or top 30 or top 40. We need all of the solutions to address all of these areas of human activity. Um, but what is surprising, and I think what, what, you're, what you're addressing here, Tati, is that um, uh, uh, we don't typically think about the food system in, uh, in, in the discussion around sustainability and the discussion around addressing uh, climate action, though things have started to change a lot in the last five years that makes us uh, the, uh, natural climate solutions and our food systems are becoming more and more prevalent in the discourse. But it's still not something that's really understood or known. I mean, it's surprising to people all over the place. Mm -hmm. And, um, but if you stop and think about it for just a minute, it, it becomes pretty clear why it's such an important contributor to greenhouse gases. Uh, because think about the food chain itself. Yes. If we think about, sorry? I was saying yes. Uh, yes. yes. If we think about, if we think about the food chain itself, which is how food gets to our mouths, right? Yes. You know, from production to harvesting and processing, packaging, distribution, markets, consumption, and then the end of life of food. We think about that entire chain. Think about every crust of bread, every drop of oil that we're producing and to consume goes through all of that. And uh, there are, there's energy, there's labor, there's money, of course, uh, and there's emissions that go along with each of those points along the food chain. So um, whether we're producing food and we're it sadly, and, and one of the number one drivers of deforestation uh, and land conversion is agriculture. So producing food for consumption contributes emissions and then how we're producing it using increasingly using industrial modern agriculture, which promotes monocropping, the use of synthetic fertilizers and pesticides um, uh, and, and, uh, and tillage, which uh, ultimately turn land into a net emitter and degrades the emitter of, of, of greenhouse gases and degrades the land, right? Uh, uh, there are emissions that happen there. But if you take that production and go outward to processing, can, making that food into various other uh, uh, food stuff that we're familiar with, those commodities into other food stuff that we're familiar with, um, to packaging. Think about all the tin, the plastic, the glass, being made in factories and that are uh, churning out emissions 
to produce this material that we then put food into. And then we take that food and we put it on trucks, trains, ships, and sadly, with too many luxury items on planes to travel all over the world, and even in our own, in our own communities, or in, our, in our, own, our own regions, traveling all over the place, all of that is using as a producing emissions, combusting fossil fuels to move that stuff around the world. Yeah, and, and I think that's a pretty good way to, to close this discussion. And thank you so much for the work that you do. It's, it's much needed. It, it, it certainly clarifies the problem, but it offers the solutions as well. But my last question to you is, on a scale of one to, let's say, 100, uh, how optimistic are you that we can reach drawdown? <laughs> that, is, that is a challenging question. One to 100? Goodness. Well, first of all, I'm ask you, is 100 the most optimistic? 100 okay. is the most optimistic. Most optimistic. I am, I would say, well, let's see, let me think about this. Um, I would say I'm a solid, I'm a solid 85. Yeah. I'm a solid 85. And, 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 and it depends on optimists to achieve what. Mm -hmm. Is it the two degree warming, Celsius warming target, 1.5 degree Celsius warming target? Is it our sustainable development goals? Is it that marker on the horizon? Um, these are different things and they're different stepping stones. And I think um, I'm 85% because I believe deeply in the brilliance of humanity. I believe in the beautiful beauty of humanity. Um, and in no small measure, it was my experience uh, for two months backpacking in sub-Saharan Africa that kindled this sense of how real people, people can be so beautiful and real and really connected to nature and the earth and the planet. And that kindled this hope and, and that I could saw in everyday people, everybody I, I encountered, that, that this, these kind, solving this is possible because, because humanity is brilliant. And you see that in local communities, you see that in indigenous people's communities, you see that um, in, in, in the sub-Saharan uh, context in those places that I, I cherish. And, and that kindled, me, kindled in me the hope that we can actually achieve it. And that's why if I didn't have that, I wouldn't be spending the last 12 years doing everything in my power and even my ability to uh, get us on this pathway to a regenerative system. Uh, and, and in no small measure, and I'm so happy to be able to speak to, to folks here today on, from the continent. Um, and, uh, uh, and I thank you for the opportunity. I'm, 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 I'm more optimistic now than ever uh, in the past, and, and uh, I appreciate this uh, this chance to to chat with you all. And thank you for the world, Chad. Thank you very much. <laughs>